Hi guys feel very welcome to Usatility. Today we are going to discover how to run Strike of Nations on PC, from now you can watch it on your screen. It takes almost no time to effortlessly download and install Strike of Nations so that we can play the game on a Windows PC with keyboard, mouse and large monitor. So it's time to have fun, let's go. Before anything else my friends, to get started we have to open our favorite internet browser. We have here the one we use by default. Let's continue, going to the current URL that I'm highlighting in green. There you are seeing it on the screen. There is no need to type anything, because there's the clickable link in the video description and the first pinned comment. We ended up on this page on our website of Usatility, exactly where we have a nice in-depth explanation on the way to obtain Strike of Nations on PC. We search lower a bit and click on the download game on PC button. After clicking on that link, we reach the website of Bluestacks which the Android emulator that we will launch to play Strike of Nations on our PC. As you can discover here we have a great deal of pros of running the emulator. So we are on the way to proceed to download the Strike of Nations by clicking on the button play on Bluestacks that you can see here in green color. We then click on it. Of course, the download starts and ends immediately. Here it is, this is the download. It is a file we have to execute. What we have to do now is to launch the installer, OK, so we have to click on this file. Windows 10 users will be asked for permission to allow changes to the device. We answered yes. I minimized the web browser to see the installer significantly better. The installation software is quite simple. It consists of two choices, install and setup path. I will show you what setup path really does. We only click it, and therefore we discover that we get here the path where the emulator is going to be put in. If we prefer to modify this folder we have to click on the browse button. So we opt for another directory and install the emulator specifically where we wish. To keep it simple, just keep it by default. I simply click on back. Therefore I pick install. Fantastic. The install starts and it will carry on along with the download of those megabytes which are represented on the screen. The moment you download it, it could be more or less MB. The data transfer speed may go faster or slower, based on your web access and according to the performance of the emulator web servers. Now they're progressing rather fast. The download is has been successful, so at this moment it proceeds with the setup part. The setup will require a little bit more or less time based on the power of your computer. The more efficient it's actually, the shorter the installation time and or vice versa. If we join the download and installation step it can take quite a while, so be patient. It is by now ended for me. At present, the emulator has actually been launched automatically. As you can discover, at the bottom of the screen, there is a progress bar that will fill up when it gets into the end, the emulator can be started for the first time. Indeed the emulator is already launched, here it is for the first time. Before we keep going, as you understand, it has created two software icons right here on the computer desktop. The Bluestacks and Bluestacks multi-instance. Note that the Bluestacks icon is definitely the one we are considering. Anytime we need to operate Strike of Nations on our laptop or computer, we double click on this particular icon and as a result launch the emulator. The Bluestacks multi-instance app icon has nothing to do with multiplayer or anything at all like this. The fact is, it's an app icon that we will most likely never ever start using. Shall we make the next step, which is a requirement, and which is to log on to the Google Play Store. As you can view the Google Play is presented. There we have to sign in. So now the moment we are here, we have to perform this next step that is compulsory. So we click on, sign in. Presently it announces, checking info. It can sometimes get blocked in, checking info, and so it isn't going to move ahead. In this case, you should try to log in in after a couple of hours and it may quite likely be repaired. At this time we shall type in our login name and password. The email ought to be a Gmail email as well as its matching password. For example you may use the very same email you are using right now in your own YouTube account. Thus I am going to provide my data and I will come back after I have completed it. Voila, information entered. Here is Google welcoming us and providing us their twos. We will approve all of them by clicking on, I agree. Following that, it allow us to backup to the Google Cloud. You can let it select it it's going to produce a backup of your data on this device to Google Drive. I won't select it, you do what you want. We mouse click on accept. Google Play, formerly Android Market, is started by default and automatically. To set up the app, we have got to visit the Android emulator desktop by simply clicking this icon indicated green colored. At present that we are exploring the desktop of the emulator, we observe that we come with right here the install video game option. We simply click on the button. Listed here we access to the game. So let's simply click right here on the install link that I am showing now in green color. That click will initiate the installation. Now it should install the video game, it could take a little while or it could be amazingly quickly. It again all relies upon on our internet access. 
It's already completed installing. It's time to go back to the emulator desktop by simply clicking on that button that I'm showing in green. That allows you to run Strike of Nations for the first time. Now let's press on the My Games option proceeding. You are at present on the emulator desktop, and consequently we are about to click that new Strike of Nations app icon which has been created. Your Android game is launched for the first time. Now there we get it, I can also click anywhere on the screen and also make use of the keyboard. I have to talk about the volume of the emulator. It's right here, we have got the icon of higher volume and also the icon of lower volume. This manner we are not going to depend on the Windows volume to increase or decrease the music of your emulator. And also to appreciate the experience to the fullest, we can switch on the large monitor, for which we have two options. This one is simply the first one, we click on this particular software icon which I'm identifying in green color. Thus the display screen is maximized, getting one border at the top, one on the right side and one at the bottom. Granted that we aspire to appreciate the game in full screen, we select this particular app icon. And thus we would probably by now be enjoying the game app in 100% screen setting. To leave the 100% screen setting, push the F11 key. And additionally we would undoubtedly by now be in regular display setting. At present, I am ready to reveal you the keyboard mapping that is really rather exciting. That strategy we will certainly be able to operate the game application much more easily. The first point is to click on this app icon. It's now time to make the necessary configuration settings. Let me put the default settings, however if you like to change this, you may very well achieve it without any problem. As you can observe, the emulator is absolutely in our language. Sometimes it happens that your emulator is started in the incorrect language, for instance, in Japanese. And as a consequence to set it up in the right language we browse here to the cogwheel. And thus right here within other options, we mouse click on the language drop down. We can easily opt for the language we prefer, Italian, Chinese, etc. After the language is determined, we should save, the emulator would reboot, along with the game, the next time we launch it, would also be in the specified language. So now, you will find another aspect that we must take into account, and it's that we will get an email telling that a brand new device has been connected to this Google account. It will definitely ask us if we are the individuals who have connected that device. Of course, we should not get worried, since the emulator is acting as an Android smartphone or tablet. So you can identify which device is being emulated, we return right here, to the cogwheel and we then click on it. Let's browse here to the, model, option. And here we determine that the emulator is behaving like a Samsung mobile. And so we're going to receive an email saying that a new Samsung device has been connected to our Google account. This is it guys, so much for this tutorial. I anticipate you enjoyed it, specifically that you thought it was handy. If that's the case, give it a superb thumb up, subscribe, and any feedback, concerns or suggestions, let them in the comment box below. You may also comment things on my Twitch channel, I perform live streams on occasion, you have it listed below in the video description and in the initial pinned comment. Check out any of the videos that happens to be showing up on the listing of videos to watch and let's have fun again in the future instructional videos. Bye.